welcome back to my channel. So today it's just me and the boys. My kindergartner is at school today and it has been raining for the last three days. So I'm in the sewing mood. Today is gonna be a sewing day in my life. <laughs> and I feel like there's some high stakes involved because I wanna wear my sewing project tonight to a ladies seminar. So I feel like there's not a lot of room for error and bringing the camera along always makes things a little more nerve wracking because I might just fail big in front of you all, but that's okay. I have this vision in my head and I pinned a couple different things on Pinterest of a dramatic flowy autumn skirt. I recently got a cream cropped cardigan that I think would look really good with the fabric I chose. And so I want to make the skirt really high, like up to my rib cage so that I don't have to worry about any gapping with the cropped cardigan and the skirt. And I just love all these fall colors. So I forgot I even bought this piece of fabric, but I was looking back on my Instagram archive and I saw me holding this, talking about what am I gonna sew with this? And I remember I was pregnant, nine months pregnant a year ago, and I didn't wanna turn this into a maternity piece. And if you guys know me, I don't exactly follow a pattern. I use my body kind of as like the form to figure out how I want something to fit. So since I didn't wanna make it maternity, I wasn't gonna make it while I was pregnant because I couldn't even fit it on to know if it was a success or not, if that makes sense. But yeah, this is the fabric. It's like a very crepey t-shirt knit. I got it from Joann's, so I'm a little leery of the quality. We'll see how it works. But I thought since it's so lightweight, that it would be perfect to make into a super gathery, flowy skirt. That way it's not so heavy. You know, if you use a very bodied fabric, sometimes it just makes the skirt super heavy with all those gathers and layers and dimension and everything. So yeah, we're just going to take this little sewing journey together, see what happens. I'll be showing you the food I make throughout the day. Momming as I try to get a project done is always an adventure. I'll probably have to run to the local Mennonite store and pick up some more thread. It'll be a good break for my three-year-old anyway. He probably would enjoy getting out of the house. And then tonight, at, after the ladies retreat, I want to talk our seminar. I wanna talk with you guys about some takeaways. The workshop I'm taking in is titled Making Our Homes a Refuge for Our Families. I just feel like I will be full of wisdom coming back from that and will wanna process it with you all. And I did wanna give a shout out to a long-standing sponsor of this channel, Native. They've given me a crazy code. I've never had one this good before. 40% off and I'll be using their body wash later. Native is awesome. They just use clean, effective, simple ingredients. No fuss, but it smells so luxurious. That right now they actually have a cabin collection that you guys are definitely gonna try out. You'll be getting a $27 value for only $17. So we'll talk about that later. Thank you Native for being a part of this video. Yeah, let's see where the day takes us. So I actually got started with my sewing day. It was probably around 9.30 and the first thing I needed to do was to organize my sewing box. This was a gift from my mom for my graduation gift. She gave me a sewing machine and all the paraphernalia to go with it. I have kept it. It's a really handy way to, yeah, just organize all your threads and your bits and bobs and all of those things. And then I had to set up my cutting table, which happens to be my kitchen table. So I took the centerpiece off and removed all the chairs so that I had plenty of room to work. there was dirt I had to wash that all up also I kind of fell down a rabbit hole and had to clean the floor because you know three kids <laughs> and by this point it was time to put Miller down for a nap which was great because now I could really get to work and then it was finally time to get going. Well, not really, almost. I first had to kind of come up with a plan. I drew out a little sketch and I kind of measured myself as I went to try to figure out how long I wanted each piece. The skirt was not gonna be like super form-fitting or anything, so the key part was just the length and then the waist. Waists on skirts always pose a challenge because they have to be small enough for your waist but then wide enough to get over your hips. So I was just trying to figure all that out and also do it with the fabric that I had. Yep, it's just part of the process if you're not gonna buy a pattern. <laughs> Okay, it is just pouring out there, but here is my crew drawing. I measured myself 
and I'm gonna need each of these pieces two times, so hopefully I have enough fabric. I should probably lay everything out ahead of time, but I can't really lay anything out because I don't really have a pattern. I will say, if you're gonna try this rogue type of sewing where you just kind of make it up as you go, definitely buy plenty of fabric. So if you do mess up, you have a little bit of wiggle room. I'm just laying this out. Oh, I hate laying out fabric. It's definitely the worst part of the job, unless I'm working with cotton. Cotton is so easy, so, so easy. here for like an hour. It should not have taken this long, but mom life, uh, <laughs> right? And I was thinking through everything. If I had a pattern, I could have really done it quickly. But this is as dramatic of a skirt as I can make with the fabric that I have. This is the leftover little pieces. I just made it as dramatic as I could, so it's still not as much as I wanted it to. I really wanted it to flare out, but we'll see how it looks finished. Either way, this is what I have to work with, so I can't I can't complain, whatever, you know? So there's three tiers, and they each get a little bit wider, and then here is my elastic waistband, and then I made a casing for it. So now I'm ready to sew it together, but first we're gonna do lunch. So I'm not about to cook on a sewing day, especially if I have to run to the store for thread. So thankfully, we're just gonna eat leftovers. Last night, I made chicken pot pie. It was a rainy evening and I was just feeling soupy. So me and the kids together made the famous chicken pot pie. To make my famous chicken pot pie, it's actually not even my recipe because I didn't invent it. My grandma did, my great grandma, my cousin, my aunt. Everybody has their own version and nobody bothers to write it down. So I just kind of happened to write it down, kind of finesse it a little bit and get it just how we like it. So you're just gonna chop up all your veggies. This is a great, great thing for your kids to help with. I have child safe knives that they can use and they just love, they love it. They feel like big kids. I also use my little Tupperware chopper to dice up all the veggies nice and small. I don't particularly love crunching into celery or onion. Soups always take a while to make, but then you can eat them for several days in a row if you make enough. I highly recommend making a big batch of this and serving it to your family for a nice cozy meal option. And if you wanna make it really fast, you can use already cooked chicken, which is what I did, so that made things a lot faster and no meat to prepare. I will link the recipe down below, it's on my website, but the star of the show is definitely the homemade pot pie noodles. This is just basically an egg noodle dough. You use eggs, flour, salt, and a little bit of water. And then you roll it out on a very floured surface. Make sure you flour it pretty good, otherwise it will stick. Trust me, they won't be dry. They're gonna soak up all that chicken broth and flavor as they sit in the soup. And yes, you can use a knife, but I like to use a pizza cutter. And if you really wanna get that Mennonite flavor, you gotta use some saffron. Not too much though. Sure got a bigger soup pot, huh? It's almost full. 
Yum. Okay, now we just have to wait like 15 minutes so we can eat. Okay, go take your boots off, it's lunchtime. <laughs> okay, here is lunch. It's looking so good, smelling amazing. This is Trader Joe's Stripey Cheese. It's really good and it's really pretty. I love it for fall. I mean, any time of year really, guys, but it looks so autumn-y, autumn-ish, whatever. And then this is just toasted baguette. So yeah, nice cozy lunch. Okay, this just came in the mail and I'm gonna I haven't even looked at it all yet, but it's so cute I was like I need to show it to you all. It's from Isabella Schilk. Maybe is how you say her name. I don't know but her Stuff is so beautiful. What is this a pin? These are like little cards and they look like they're all different. Here's a little pin R rainbow one another little card and Oh my word look at these stickers. She gave me a code for you guys too. 15% off um, I'll put that on the screen here. This is sticky notes, but not just sticky notes. They're cute ones. A little butterfly pin. We have a little to-do list and a journal. Isabella Shield. Wow. How beautiful. Thank you, Isabella. I can't believe you thought of me. And yeah, guys, if you need anything, check out her website and use that code. I don't usually just shout out random packages that come in the mail on YouTube, but I mean, I guess you got lucky. It was meant to be. I was filming and how, how pretty. So the boys are playing Play-Doh, so cute, and I'm going to get to work on this space here. I'm so thankful for this cozy little office space. It's also going to be my sewing room. I kind of double it up as both. I just will like put my computer away and stuff and then set up right here. Um, it's lacking in light a little bit right now just because it's so dreary and rainy outside. Anyway, let's get this all situated and convert it over to a little sewing space. are down for their naps. I did try to sew before nap time because we had a little bit of time, but it did not go well. <laughs> so I just read them a book and then put them to bed and it's just a cozy afternoon. So I'm going to make myself a special coffee drink and get back to sewing again. I don't have an espresso machine. Josh just doesn't love fancy coffees. He just likes his drip coffee and I 
I have found like a hundred different ways to make really yummy coffees without an espresso machine like cold brew. Um, I'm gonna actually use this today though. It's actually like in lieu of an espresso shot. It's from Cometeer and they did reach out and ask if we could work together and I told them that I would be very interested because honestly, it is the best coffee I've ever had. Better than espresso machine, you know, iced lattes. I'd love to brag about them, but I want a discount code if I'm gonna do that because it's definitely a luxurious price tag. Still the best coffee I've ever had, but I feel like you pay for it. So anyway, still waiting to hear back from them on that. So if they do work with me and give me a code for you all, um, I'll be sure to share it with you in the future so you guys can all try it out as well. It's it's so good. But I made a whole bunch of new coffee syrups recently, so I have all kinds of options. I think today, since it's rainy outside, I'm kind of feeling something cozy with maybe some cinnamon. So I think I'll make a white chocolate cinnamon iced latte. Does that sound good? And I'm gonna use my new thrifted glass that you might have seen in my last week in my life video. Wow, so, so delicious. So basically I just did a white chocolate drizzle and then ice and milk, cream, the espresso shot from Cometeer, whipped cream on top and some cinnamon dusting, everything. So yeah, this is about as cozy of an iced coffee as you can get. I know I still don't love hot drinks, but someday I'll grow up, but until then, iced coffee all day. Okay, so I have all my pieces laid out on my very shaggy carpet, but I did the gathering stitch already in like that big stitch, and now I have everything laid out. I just need to sew each piece together, which sounds really easy, but when you're gathering things, gathering things is such a pain. I'm really not sure how much explaining you want me to do here, but I'll just say that if you wanna make anything with gathers, it's kind of a simple concept but it's definitely not a beginner concept. You sew a large stitch across the top without backstitching at all, and then you pull on the one thread to bunch up all the fabric and make gathers, and then you have to sew those gathers to whatever you're sewing it to, you know? So it's a simple idea, but it takes a lot of practice, I feel, to get it nice and even. It takes a lot of time. It really is time consuming. The more gathers you do, just the more work it is by its very own nature. But I had my yummy coffee and the rain was falling outside and the children were in bed napping. It was, it was pretty blissful, I'm not gonna lie. making the tube for the waistband. Basically, you sew the tube inside out and then you have to somehow turn it around the right side out so that you don't see your seam. So after I used my fingers to get it right side out, I took a safety pin and put it on the end of my elastic and then I used the safety pin to wiggle the elastic through the tube or the waistband to get it all, you know, in place. And it was a perfect job to do while I sat on the porch and waited for my daughter to get home from school. Honestly guys, it's it's my favorite part of the day. So fun. I never know what's gonna come out of her mouth, how the day's gonna, I mean the days always go good. She loves, she loves school. But yeah, it's just so fun. I feel like she has her own little personality outside of me. Like it really is, it really is letting go when you send your children off to school outside your home. But I'm kind of loving that part of it. You know, just all the stories she comes back with and I feel like she's developing her own personality. Okay, so I have the front of the skirt sewed to the side seam of the back of the skirt. So it's this huge piece. 
I want it dramatic, right? And then here is the waistband that I made and it stretches this big. So hopefully it goes over my hips when I wanna pull it up. But I'm basically gonna gather this skirt into the waistband. Wait, now that I'm thinking about this out loud, maybe I'll sew everything in a circle. Okay, never mind. Change my mind. <laughs> I'm making the rolls up as I go here. an audiobook about the space race and I literally feel like I've just gone where no woman has gone before guys do not do as I do get a pattern the tension in my face I'm sure you can see it I'm just like I have no idea how it's gonna turn out but here is the moment of truth no it's not a curtain it's my skirt so I got the waistband on and now I'm just gonna sew it around in a circle and down the side seam and then we'll see if it stays on Cut off all the threads. I'll have to hem it yet too, because it's definitely too long. Um, I did that intentionally. finished and I have some thoughts. I'm not going to show it to you yet. Um, yeah, I'm going to go get ready, style it up, and I'll do like a little reveal. Okay, I'm currently in my favorite room in the house, um, my bathroom. If you guys missed my last video, go watch it. It's quite the story and Josh joins us for like half the video, but I just wanted to go over a few things I like to use in the shower. Not demonstrating, but <laughs> um, first of all, I have bar shampoo I use like every third wash maybe I wash my hair like twice a week only so but I get this from Chag Chagrin Valley Chagrin Valley I'm not sure how they say that they actually have a bar of shampoo that is known to bring out red highlights in your hair if you have red hair I don't have red hair but I can wish right a girl can wish but I really do like their stuff and it's much more natural and safe so I use that and then mix it up with like a body shampoo once in a while too and my new skincare I've been trying out lately I mainly bought it for the pretty packaging. Um, I really like Tula. My skin was great on it, but sometimes good to switch it up. And I wanted to try pretty packaging. So um, I'm using the Burst brand and this is has retinol in it. So I just use that like twice a week. And then their brightening serum, which is always a favorite. I'm like a scaly, scaly skinned person. So I always have moisturizer on. So yeah, I don't know. I don't wear a lot of makeup, but I try to take my skincare halfway seriously. And I've always used Native Deodorant, but lately I've been using their body wash. And like I said, they've given me a discount code for you all. Three body washes are normally $27, but if you use my link and code, you'll get them for 17. That's 40% off. Don't miss out. That's a limited time offer. So use it while you can. The scents I got this time are Citrus and Herbal Musk. Always get this one. It's my favorite. It's very bright and then not too florally or anything. I also got cucumber and mint, which is just like a super fresh scent and it's actually one of my favorites as well. And then charcoal, which <laughs> I always get charcoal because one, I do like the smell. Actually, this is my favorite one of the three. Why is that? Wow, I like their charcoal deodorant scent too um, because I feel like it's very gender neutral and you know, Josh can use it too if he needs to. No, we don't share deodorant tubes, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, I just wanted to give Native another shout out. Native is naturally derived to help cleanse your skin. It's sulfate, phthalate, and dye-free, vegan and cruelty-free. It's also made with plant-based and purified ingredients, and it has citric acid to help with your pH balance. So yeah, check them out. I'll put all the information down below. Look who woke up. Right on cue, right? <laughs> Anyway, Josh is on his way home, so I'm going to jump in the shower and get ready, and then I will be off to the Lydia Seminar. Okay, so I do need to fix up my hair and maybe put a little makeup on or something, but here is the skirt. I... I'm really happy with it. It looks great. It does not look good with this top like I imagined. This is a Steve Madden top. It's just too bulky on the top and the bottom, like really flowy everywhere. I 
feel like I'm swimming. But I wanted to show you the waistband here while I had you up close. As you can see, I just sewed it on the wrong side and flipped it up. And then, yeah, it stays up. I can get it over my hips just fine. It's a little weighty, so it is kind of sliding down a little bit. But I feel like you could tuck your top in and kind of balloon it out over. Um, it's just, it's in the back, there's just no <laughs> shape at all. So I think I need to find a different top. Hang on. Okay, Josh just passed me in the hall and he said I look like 10 feet tall. So I'll take that as a compliment. This is the final outfit. I think I can link my heels down below. And then this is a thrifted uh, blazer. I like how it's like very femininely cut. I like how it's not so like beefy and masculine. And then this is like a lettuce leaf mock neck black top that I just tucked in and I think we're good to go. Um, I, if I could do this project again, I will say I wish it didn't gather so much up here. I think I would just make it more fitted to my body up top. I'd rather have more of the volume coming from like this area more than up here, but overall I really do like it a lot. And then as far as making a broomstick style skirt look nice for fall, I think I achieved it. I don't know, I always think of more of this style for summertime, but with this fabric I knew I wanted more of like a fall winter piece. So yeah, let me know what you think down below. What would you change? What would you do differently? I feel like I definitely learned some things. So if I make another one, it would definitely go a lot easier, a lot less stressful. As you can see, I keep merching it up a little bit. It's because of the weight of the skirt. It keeps pulling it down. That's one reason I don't love skirts as much as dresses. If this was a dress, it would kind of stay put, but then I couldn't tuck shirts in and stuff, you know? Okay, I got my water, my clutch, my notebook, and I'm ready to go off and learn how to make my home a haven for my family. She says as she leaves the house a wreck from sewing all day. <laughs> Does anybody else feel me? I feel like the house just goes downhill on a sewing day, but it's okay. I'm gonna be home all day tomorrow and I'll just give this house a good tidy up. But yeah, let's go. guys it's the next morning actually i hope you enjoyed coming along the singing was so inspiring and just like soul filling it's amazing anyway i hope i could catch a little bit of that for you but the skirt did kind of grow as the evening went on which i knew it would because it did not feel like super quality fabric it was from joanne's like i said so i am going to trim it off a little bit more and wash it once or twice and see what happens um, I did intentionally make the last tier extra long, so um, hemming it won't make it look weird or anything. But yeah, I did really enjoy wearing it, and I know I'm going to get a lot of use out of it, especially in the fall. But yes, I threw this skirt on again this morning because I wanted to pair it with this sweater that came in the mail from Amazon. And I was skeptical, but I'm keeping it, guys. It is such good quality. It's hard to show on screen. Um, I haven't washed it, so I don't know how it's going to wash necessarily, but the sleeves are just fun. And yeah, it's just very classic and um, very, very warm and cozy. And it's so soft, like it's not itchy or scratchy whatsoever. But I did want to um, recap a little bit of my thoughts for the evening. Um, I may actually make a whole video on this coming up. So let me know if you find this topic interesting. Um, I would love to know. But I wrote just notes and notes from her topic of making our homes a refuge for our family. Cindy talked about so many practical things. It made me feel like my job is actually super important and vital to not just my success and my husband's success, but our children's success in the future. And I just felt like coming away, like the gravity of my role as a mother and a homemaker and how I set the tone and that my priority as a homemaker and a mother should be that our family, my children, my husband feel seen, heard, and valued when they come into our home. She talked about having your home just feeling tense, even if you're not 
you know, necessarily fighting out loud in front of your children with your spouse? Do they feel tension? Just that feeling makes children not want to come home when they're older, you know? Um, she had so many other practical little things. Let me just read a few off of here. Maybe one of them will stick with you for your week. She likes to display scripture in every room of her home as part of her decor. She said it's important that our children see us sit and that we model with them rest. Um, she does a date night once a month with each kid. Every week somebody gets a date night with mom or dad and it's on the calendar so they feel special even the mom and dad have all kinds of other schedules and priorities on their calendar as well. They are putting their kids in the schedule. I thought that was really creative, um, especially as my kids get older. She said routines give safety and continuity and when your family is going through a troubled time, those routines can be the glue that holds things together. Children love to know what to expect and when things are changing around them, it's nice to know like there's the same routine at bedtime and same routine in the morning after you come home from school, all of that. Something else she does is her children go to a Christian school as well and she starts praying for them already when she knows they're on the bus headed home, praying that they would have a proper spirit as they come home and that she would have the time and the energy to you know to say the right things and the take to take the time to listen if the day was hard for them or whatever i just thought that's a great way to set the tone before they even come home she said how we should let our children feel safe to cry in front of us something else that she said that was a good reminder for me and something that feels very meganish something that i could do is she said when you sit down to plan your week schedule in the walks schedule in reading time Care for your body, care for your uh, mind. Make sure you have time for adequate sleep because everything else suffers if you don't. Yeah, it's just so many things that I'm glad I heard when I'm 29 and not when I'm like 49. So I wanna start implementing so many of these in the new year and I honestly think my word for 2023 can't believe I'm thinking about that already is probably going to be something along these lines because it just really spoke to my heart. Like I could cry, I was just so glad I was there. I know my husband took up the reins and took care of the children in the evening and everything, but I definitely feel like I was meant to be there and it was just so soul filling and inspiring and I felt like I did some things correctly so far and there's some things I definitely could work on. So I don't know what from that you were supposed to hear, but I hope it was encouraging. And thank you guys for coming along for a sewing day in my life. I really enjoyed hanging out with you all. Let me know if you're a sewer or if you're not, why you still like to watch these videos. I'd love to know because I love to make them. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.